Hello ladies and gentlemen and welcome back to the Common Sense Crypto Channel. As with you always, this is Rich doing another video today on QNT. So I hope you're all having a wonderful day wherever you are in this great, great world. We're going to talk about QNT. Now in this video, we're going to talk about all the FUD on crypto Twitter as far as QNT. And I'm going to show you exactly how meaningless that FUD is. So let's take a look. QNT to the moon. Right now, everybody is excited about QNT because the price is way up. People are excited when that happens. And again, it's moving against Bitcoin. Quants, QNT turned out to be one of the best performing tokens in the last four weeks. Now, over the past four weeks, I've been telling you, find a good entry point that you can live with and buy in. Don't sit on the sidelines waiting for some sort of Bitcoin crash. For those who purchase Q&T at $40 and under, would you still purchase more at $200? I would still buy Q&T at $500 because I still believe it's going to move to five digits at some point. And the thing is, you have to either live with the entry point you get now or you may never get these prices where we're at right now. It could still go much higher. People looking for those low prices most likely will get priced out at some point. Dang, the overledger allows any L1, any L2, any DLT, any non-DLT legacy network to talk to each other at the same time. And yes, it can connect any number of the above at the same time. It's not a one-to-one -one bridge. It is the TCP IP of crypto and other informational networks. It's massive. A massive network is taking place right now, all being built. Q&T is going to be the glue holding that together. So the price we're still at now is a very undervalued price. Imagine interoperating two CBDCs with a proof of stake network in between, such as Chainlink. R3 is excited to report they found the better way, Q&T. In the technical debate around CBDC, interoperability is sometimes portrayed as a straight binary trade-off against network sovereignty with issuers expecting to sacrifice control of their network and its consensus systems to be able to interact with other issuers. I'm telling you right now, Q&T, whenever the CBDCs finally come up and running, Q&T at that point will definitely not be touchable in price. It's going to skyrocket. And I believe we're going to continue going upward from here. We're starting to see XRP break away from Bitcoin also. So even if Bitcoin crashes, doesn't mean QNT is going to crash with it. I've been suggesting indirectly for investors to buy QNT for over a year now. And that's the thing. I've been saying it for quite a while also. Get in now. The price is cheap. It was, I believe, in the 40s at that time. I said, it's going to easily go to $50, $60 very soon. Now's a great entry point. Then it hit $60. I said, now's the time to buy before it gets to $100. Now it's over $100. Find an entry point and buy in. So now we're going to talk about the crypto Twitter FUD. Busting 99% of crypto Twitter Q&T FUD in one thread. It's ERC-20. It's on ERC-20 because Ethereum is the most adopted chain. It can move to another chain easily. The whole concept of Q&T and the project is to allow seamless interoperability to any chain system. Having their token accessible to one chain would have been quite ironic. Token isn't needed. This is actually a compliment. They want everything as seamless and easy for enterprises and governments as possible. You can't expect those guys to market by Q&T just to use Overledger. They give it the fiat option, which gets immediately converted to Q&T. Each developer and enterprise needs to hold Q&T as a license to be able to develop and publish maps. End users will also need to hold Q&T to be able to run maps. Centralized. The company Quant, yes. Overledger, no. The whole reason why this project is even open to the public is so we can decentralize the network with gateways. Corps and governments won't give all that trust to a single entity. So have a common set of rules and make it open. Not ISO compliant. 
Please read Gilbert Verdian's history. Why would ISO approve of a standard that they knew would have overlapping industries just to have it incompatible with each other? They wouldn't. They work hand in hand. 222 financial data. 307 blockchain and DLT. And again, people will continue to fud around this coin. I see it all the time. I've seen people compare QNT to Luna Classic. I can't even believe people can do that. The bad thing about that, though, is it scares new investors away because they don't know any better. Somebody, they'll ask somebody in the crypto space, in crypto Twitter space, hey, what's the best crypto I should buy? Somebody will say QNT. Somebody else will say, oh, stay away from that scam coin. It's not a good buy. It's going to zero. These people are absolutely ridiculous at this time. That's why I'm pointing it out in this video. Because I want new investors to understand what they're buying. They're buying one of the greatest cryptos out there right now. This is life-changing money. You can earn off of QNT. No adoption. Just because it's not integrated into your favorite L1 doesn't mean no adoption. QNT has a, lightweight, a white label service, meaning companies can pay quant to use their tech and not have to give them a hint of credit. NDA contracts. Already expensive. This is perhaps the dumbest piece of FUD I've ever seen. Would hardly classify it as FUD even. QNT is 33% more scarce than Bitcoin, with 14.6 million and zero token inflation. This is equivalent to Bitcoin at $38, Ethereum at 6, XRP at a penny, Doge at less than a penny, and expensive wear. And that's the thing, even at these prices we're sitting at now, I don't feel QNT is expensive yet. I think it has a lot of upside potential from here. Scamcoin. You really think someone with these backgrounds would waste their time and reputation for a quick buck? This would also mean MIT rugged us, SIA rugged us, Oracle rugged us, BOE, BOC, Fed rugged us, Latum stays undeveloped, Government UK rugged us, ISO rugged us, silly. And that's the thing, people still say that ISO means nothing. That the new financial system means nothing for crypto. These are the same people that don't understand we're headed into the fourth industrial revolution, the digital age. Things are changing very fast. Technology is moving at the speed of light. The people that butt around this are the same people that will be crying later. I can't wait to see how many crypto Twitter accounts get deleted once all of these cryptocurrencies really skyrocket in price. No community. We have an amazing community. Check it out. The focus is 99% on government and corpse. We're not the priority as of now. They don't have time to give us weekly updates. If this hurts your ego, Q&T may not be for you. Competition. Interoperability is a buzzword and has levels to it. Dot, Atom, Link, etc. are all interoperable. Q&T is the only solution that not only a multi-chain scale, but even DLT to legacy and vice versa. Not only that, but completion has quite some catching up to do. Regulations. At this point, I hope most of you have realized regulations aren't much of a worry for QNT. Gilbert himself is a regulator. He was the, in the EU Commission the same time MICA was drafted. Additionally, they've also done everything to become a utility token under FINRA. And again, regulations are not going to be an issue for QNT. Paid shills. Absolute bullshit. Can't believe I'm even adding this. None of the popular QNT researchers have been paid anything. Not Greg or San, who bring TOP research. Not Jeff, who's been there since day one. And definitely not someone looking other projects like me. And again... QNT never messaged me on crypto Twitter and said, hey, can you talk about QNT, please? Absolutely not. I've had a lot of people ask me to talk about different cryptos. I turned them all down. I only believe in utility. I believe in the cryptocurrencies that are going to make you money. I don't only want to get rich. I want all of you to get rich also. That's what this channel is about. For more detailed analysis on QNT, where I've been and continue to accumulate, head to 
Paramoon Venture for weekly shows of utility networks like QNT, DAG, HBAR, etc., where we debunk FUD, draw more connections, and find great entries. And that's the thing. I still believe right now is a great entry point for QNT. I believe if you don't get in soon, you will not be a whole coiner. You won't be able to buy a whole one. CBDCs ensure Bitcoin will not be adopted by the masses. This is why QNT will flip Bitcoin. And all those people still out there on crypto Twitter saying Bitcoin's the chosen one. They're going to implement Bitcoin. But most of those people are Bitcoin maxis who don't know any better. They only see Bitcoin. They don't understand utility because Bitcoin has none. So with that said, I'm going to leave you with this. If you're already holding QNT, continue to hold it. It's going to five digits. If you don't hold big, uh, QNT yet, now's the time to buy in. The price is still low. With that said, we'll see you in the next one. Have a great night.